Oh well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. Chris here with another video. We've got this uh, small form factor tower desktop type thing going on here. We've seen uh, a couple of times this kind of form factor. This is a different bezel front end. Um, I'm not sure if I've, I think I've done one Acer Aspire, but it certainly didn't have a front end like this. So uh, this I think was a maybe newer style. So this is an Acer Aspire. It's an AX1900 dash B4802. So this is a Core 2 Duo series machine. Um, it's in okay condition. Um, it, it had lived its full life and is <laughs> it needed some restoration. So just taking a quick look here, we've got our opening where we've got our optical drive. There's quite a bit of a, a like quite a bit of depth for the optical drive to come out from this front bezel, which is kind of interesting to me. Normally I would expect it to be a lot closer, but they left a ton of room. So you have to be kind of careful putting in your drives, uh, make sure that it's, you know, out and settled before you try to slide it in. And we got four USB ports. We've got uh, our audio ports down on the bottom here with those USB ports. And if we spin around to the back, oh, that power button up at the top here. And then at the back, a pretty, uh, pretty slim pickings here. We've got our old style keyboard and mouse ports, a VGA port, USB, Ethernet, and some audio ports. So like just, just the basics uh, going on here. If I open up our case, I'm gonna take these two screws off. And I'm gonna slide off the uh, side panel here. So this just kind of tweaks off here. It is nice that the the side panel here has so much uh, openings and mesh to allow some airflow uh, to keep the system kind of cool. So then we'll take a look inside at our guts here. So we've got our processor block here, um, two little spots here for expansion. There's a PCIe Gen uh, 2, I think here, by 16 and a by one. So you could put a low profile graphics adapter in here and then maybe like a Wi-Fi adapter if you wanted to as well. So there is some, some expansion options available. Um, our optical drive here, and then underneath is the hard drive mounted uh, sideways, and that's a three and a half inch uh, drive bay down there. Uh, there's only two SATA ports on the board. So if you wanted to do something different than an optical drive and a hard drive, like two hard drives, say, um, you only have two SATA ports to work with. So, you know, it's not like, the amount of room that's in here is going to be an issue because whatever drive you're going to be replacing with something else, you've got room. <laughs> uh, and then we've got two dim slots down here. Um, it is DDR3 memory, which is good um, because you get that better performance at a DDR3. And then you've got this slimline process um, uh, power supply here. The original power supply that was in this was toast, had a really bad cap, which was preventing the system from booting properly. Um, I just so happened to have one of these form factor power supplies available uh, that I had pulled out, I guess, from another machine that was was must have been destroyed or, or wasn't working properly. And I kept the power supply um, just in case uh, I would be able to make use of it. And I, in fact, was so that fit in here perfectly and uh, yeah, is able to power up the machine. So I'm going to get the uh case cover put back on here and I'm going to get it set up and we will take a look at uh, our system setup here. Well we're all set up here we've got our our Acer set up here with this Samsung SyncMaster 940N and then I've got a PS2 Microsoft keyboard and then a USB uh, Microsoft optical mouse. So I'm going to hit the power button and we'll get Windows loaded up. Something I want to note, um, just some of my experience uh, with getting Windows 10 installed on older machines here, is with older style keyboards and mice, so PS2 connectivity. Um, obviously a PS2 mouse is going to be a rarity, because um, a PS2 optical mouse are really hard to find these days, um, but a ball mouse isn't necessarily. Now I've had to do it a couple of times just for what I had available, but keyboards is a lot more common. What I found is if you're doing this as well and hooking up older keyboards and mouse that are PS2 connected to uh, to your system like and I'm talking about older keyboards not the newer mechanical style ones that that have the they're communicating correctly these older ones they're expecting a different response from the computer in terms of their setup what you will 
often find is if you plug it in the first time and boot up the system, Windows isn't going to recognize the keyboard, or at least it'll seem like it doesn't recognize the keyboard. But if you just let Windows run for a minute and then restart it, then when you restart it, it will have install, installed the keyboard and the keyboard or mouse will respond properly. So um, I had had this a couple times with, with setting up machines. What I'll do is I'll, I'll have my, my desk, you know, one of my desk keyboards here, one of my ThinkPad keyboards here. This is a wire, I've got a wired one and a wireless one. I'll have them for setting up the machine. And before I disconnect that, I'll, I'll test out the, the additional keyboard and mouse that's gonna get paired up with it first before I disconnect that, just in case I need to be able to restart the machine. Um, and that almost always, once it's had that boot loop, uh, it is okay. And I've found that oftentimes it's even to the point in terms of how picky Windows will be about this is, if I took a different PS2 keyboard from my rack and put it on this machine, I would have to restart again. Like it, it sees it as a separate PS2 keyboard device and it needs to set it up in the background before it'll work properly. Um, anyways, just a little tidbit I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm gonna move a little bit closer to the screen here and we'll take a look at hardware info now. Okay, so taking a look at our specs on this machine, uh, what I ended up installing, a Pentium dual core E5800 processor. So this is a dual core, obviously, non hyper threaded with up to 3.2 gigahertz worth of performance. And we've got a 250 gig uh, SATA drive. It's a SATA 3, I think that is, 1.5 gigabyte. So it's a, you know, a little bit slower um, drive. And then that DVD RAM drive that's in there. Graphics wise, we have the GMA 4500, uh, which is a shared graphics memory. So, but I took a little bit of a risk thinking, well, this is DDR3 memory now, so maybe it's gonna be a little bit better, right? Uh, um, RAM performance directly impacts how well integrated graphics performance will be. Uh, so, you know, maybe that'll be a little bit helpful. And we do have four gig worth of memory installed in this machine, which, you know, is, is better, obviously, than having three or maybe only two, uh, which is where I get into that range where I'm like, I got to install a GPU into this to make sure that it can work properly. In this case, um, we're, we're just going with it with the four gig to share the memory graphics. So with that being said, let's take a look and see how this thing handles some uh, YouTube streaming action. Maybe we'll do, uh, it's been a while, maybe, I don't know. Let's try some Crab Rave this time. We have a 1280 by 1024 screen to work with here. So a 720p video would be native resolution. We're gonna try out 1080p and see how the system handles itself. So just taking a view here, we're dropping a couple of frames, which it does happen at the beginning of, 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 a, of a stream, sometimes even with a buffer uh, in place. I'm seeing a tiny, tiny bit of hitching in this as well. Just like the, you know, every once in a while, I see the, the tiniest little stutter. Um, but again, that could be just something else going on in the system. I, I, there is some hard drive activity that's been running here as the system's been booting up, so there might be some kind of background work that Windows has decided it needed to do right this second. But everything seems to be smooth now. We, after those 15 frames that we came, you know, there's maybe like a 1%, uh, a 0.1% frame drop rate that we're dealing with here, which is, I mean, I think that's fully acceptable. And obviously dropping down to 720p will, will eliminate that. So overall, a successful build, I think. And overall, a successful video, I think. Uh, I hope that you think so as well and want to drop a, a like in there. Uh, maybe uh, subscribe, share it with your friends and, and family and anyone else that might be interested in uh, what I'm doing uh, the, with the Retro PC Drone Project and, and the content that I share on this channel. As always, I hope you are staying safe and healthy, and we'll catch you in the next one.